Hey, welcome back to Plug and Play EV. Uh, I'm Steve, and in this one, we're coming back to these Melrose pole mounted chargers. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by Martha Grover, who is the sustainability manager for the city of Melrose. So, welcome, Martha. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, so, I really wanted to follow up on these. Obviously, last time when we started with the uh, pole mounted chargers, we got so much interest, and you yourself have seen the, uh, you know, from that, from the Boston Globe coverage, from everybody across the country. Uh, I think it was peaked a little bit more recently with some. Uh, extra installations of these in Seattle. Um, what can you tell us about the reaction that you've had to these and where they're being used throughout your community? Sure, there are now 15 of these installed on nine poles around Melrose. We were able to install them near recreation areas across several different business districts. Mm -hmm. And now we have two new ones that are near multi-family, multi-unit buildings in an area that's dense, more dense right. with those. And so what I'm seeing, what I'm finding is that they're used by people who don't have access to charging mm -hmm. in their home or their apartment or condo and people who are just topping it off while they shop or have dinner or whatever in the right. district or, at, or are at a game watching their Sure. Okay. Kids. So local sports. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this does serve the community very well-rounded. Uh, what kind of um, usage time are you seeing? The average charging sessions are ranging somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, we've had over 5,000 charging sessions at these 15 units okay. in the two years. Some of them are really, really busy. Uh -huh. And you know it's getting good use from the community. You know, interlopers from out of city are coming in like myself to yep. check them out. Um, have you seen any interesting use cases? The things that I see on social media are people who come to Melrose right. <laughs> for a game or a round of golf mm -hmm. or something and they see them, they've never seen them before. An right. EV driver who's been around a lot and mm -hmm. they're they get really excited, the so they, gotcha. they, yeah, I've seen some of that. I've seen um, Uber drivers, you know, who are, have EVs or plug-in right. hybrid who really like to use them. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, um, one of my favorite stories is just an anecdote from a condo or an apartment owner, apartment renter, who um, said she didn't know about them, and then she saw it on a pole, blocked down from her apartment, mm -hmm. She looked into it and she then went out and bought a used leaf and right. she's using it to charge it up. She's driving whatever, a few miles to and from work mm -hmm. on the cheap. And right. she just, it finally made it possible for her to get an EV. And that's got to be the kind of story of you love to hear. Yeah, it just, yeah. that was fantastic. Perfect. And they are, I did drive by this one before I realized it was here and saw the kind of bright green, you know, it's, yeah. it's clear once you look up there that this yep. is EV charging. So it's yep. been a good for that. Um, we touched briefly on the multifamily dwelling. I think that's where people really are seeing the potential for this. Obviously, it's nice to have them for you know visitors, passers-by, locals who go shopping, uh, mm -hmm. sports, that kind of thing. But for potentially people who have no access to charging at home, and those people who thought, would I be able to own an EV? Um, what are you seeing there? And can you tell us more about the ones that have been at multifamily dwellings? Yeah, and I, I just think that that is the prime use case for these. Or in densely populated uh, cities across, well, anywhere, but when I think about Massachusetts, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, the three-deckers, places where people live where they don't have driveways, they don't have um, garages. And mm -hmm. so this is, it's accessible, it's right there at the curb, you know, within a 10 minute walk, hopefully, of where they live. They can charge overnight, they can charge after work for a few hours, and get to, and then con continue to proceed with getting to and from work and doing right. their errands. And so topping up 30, works. 40 miles, and then yeah. you can go about another yeah. day of work. Gotcha, gotcha. Makes it possible. For sure. It's the, inevitably, the question gets asked, what about maintenance? There's a lot of engineers, I think, you know, or, you know, tinkerer engineers. That they will most want to know the moving parts on these. Uh, you were talking about the maintenance, yeah. still all original, right? I mean, this, this equipment is rock solid. Mm -hmm. The mechanics, the, the, the moving parts. Yep. Um, the biggest challenge we found is just in the communications networks and, and um, whatever the communications equipment is yep. and that's true for both our ground mounted chargers right. there's nothing and these. unique to these nothing unique to yeah. these for it's the just 
communicating with the software provider so that it can control what this thing needs to do. Yep. Is there electric surge or mm -hmm. something that sometimes will keep cause the communications to go off and then we just need to reset the breaker. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the equipment so, itself, the retracting mechanism, yep. all weather, all seasons. All the original stuff. It's been through all two original. Massachusetts winters yes. now for anyone. I know last winter was a little yep. bit easier, but before that it was a ripper and we had yeah. snow and wind and we've had torrential rain throughout most of this yep. summer. So it's not been a good summer in that sense, but these have held that, up and they're yeah, still charging. not an issue at all. You can see they're charging. It's charging my EV right now. Yep. It's charging a Honda Clarity here. That's been there since I arrived. So working well. Yeah, I would just love to see see this in more communities. Yep. I just think that it's it's a br brilliant application, you know, high up on the pole, mm -hmm. uh, not in the way of snow plows, not in the way, you know, on the sidewalk of walkers or anybody who uses sidewalks. It, it works, and we this demonstration project showed that it was cheaper to install them on poles. Um, then to do your take up real estate on the sidewalk and do the trenching and trying to get to right. the power source, it just it just makes a lot Something of sense. Something I had missed actually was the uh, national grid had brought it to you as they wanted to do this because it was forty percent cheaper. Yeah, to it ended inst up being right. equipment and installation forty percent cheaper okay. than your traditional ground mounted. Perfect. So cheaper, convenient, and very useful for yeah. EV drivers yeah. and uh, well maintained popular, as well. So yes. I can't say more really. I mean, I think obviously yeah. there are there are limitations that will come across and some stuff that I've uh, jumped across today in terms of you know people uh, parking in the spots, but these are <laughs> happening in regardless of whether they're up a pole or on the ground. Sure. So super interesting to see. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate getting the inside track on these. And uh, yeah, thank we'll you. Great hopefully to meet you. be back to Melrose very soon. Thank you, Martha. Awesome. Thanks. Hey. hey, how are you? Moving back oh, no worries. We're, we're finished interview? now. We'll stop here. <laughs> Do you use these often? Huh? Do you use this often? Very frequently, yes. Great. You're I like it very much. However, there oh. are a lot of people with big trucks. There was one right here. That's why I'm in this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very annoying.